It's Mel. It's time to do the mid-year check-in tag. This is sometimes called the mid-year freak-out tag, but I don't like that title, so I don't call it that. And I also wanted to talk about some stats. I did the mid-year tag questions a little bit differently. I saw Juniper Jade do the questions in reverse, and I thought that was a cool idea. And also, Books and Lala always switches up the questions and how they're asked. So I've added a few questions from Books and Lala's questionnaire. I've reversed the order of some of the questions like Juniper Jade did. I have cat hair all over this shirt. You know how it is. And I have my charts and graphs from the second quarter of the year. The first question that wasn't on the original tag, which I will link the creators of this tag down below. I'm not sure if they're still active on booktube or not, but the first new question is, how is your reading going so far this year? At this midpoint, it's going okay. It's not going the best ever. I haven't had so many books that I'm like, oh my gosh, these are totally amazing. I'm totally in love with this. I'm so excited. I'm also having a good a totally fine good reading year. I'm not having a bad reading year by any accounts. I'm reading a little bit too much. While we're talking about how my reading year is going, let's talk about the second quarter. In the second quarter, I read 47 books. I read 31 books that were by authors new to me, 66% and 34% of authors that I had read from before. I am not meeting my goal of reading at least 50% of works by authors of color in the second quarter. Only 44.7% of the books were by authors of color, so I want to definitely improve that in quarter three and four. But my goal of reading 25% or more by queer authors, I did meet 34% of the books that I read in quarter two were by queer authors or had queer rep. I read more nonfiction this quarter than I did the previous one with 23.4% of my overall reading. I read many more translated works this quarter, which is exciting too. I'm hoping to read a lot more of that in quarter three because we will have Women in Translation Month in August, which I am super looking forward to. I almost totally forgot about it, and then someone reminded me on Booktube, and now I'm like super stoked. So I read five translated works, which works out to be 10.9%, and that's way higher than quarter one, which is great. I read from various different countries, mostly America, but I also read England, Japan, the Caribbean, Vietnam, Ireland, Canada, India, and Mexico. We'll talk about my most read genre in a question in the tag. I was really happy to read some works by trans and non-binary authors in quarter two. In the first quarter, I only read cis men and women, to my knowledge, but in quarter two, I read 10.6% trans or non-binary authors, which is awesome. I will be doing a goals check-in, and I will also be doing a RAB spreadsheet, my recently acquired books spreadsheet, but I did put down that 14 of the books that I read in quarter two were owned pre-2023. 17 of the books that I read I got in 2023. 14 of the books were audio books that I read, and two were other, so those might have been that I read them online or that I uh, read them from a YouTube video or something like that. Those were my charts for the second quarter of the year. On to the rest of the questions for the mid-year tag. It says, how many books have you read so far this year? There's some debate about this. My Goodreads said I only read 81, but at least one of the books that I've read this year wasn't on Goodreads, and I think it was actually two, because by my own calculation, I've read 83 books as of the end of June. All these questions are gonna be as of the end of June. Any of the books that I've read in July so far are not going to be counted in these calculations. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? I need to read my TBR spin pile, which of course I pick one at a time each month. I want to do another cat cozy mystery vlog, and the book that I really want to read for that is Mimi Lee Gets a Clue. I just haven't had a chance to do that yet. I have a couple of borrowed books that I need to read, so I have borrowed Invisible Cities by Italio Calvino from my best friend Isaac. I want to read that and return it to him, and then I borrowed 
South of the Border, West of the Sun from my friend Kai, and I want to try to read that by the end of, well, sooner than later, not necessarily by the end of the year, as soon as possible, so that I can return this book to her. I didn't think I'd be reading a more comic book ever in my life, but since Kai said this was a good one, I'm going to give it a shot. Most beautiful book you've bought or received. So I picked out a couple. I love this cover for Red Island House by Andrea Lee. I don't even remember what this is about, but it's been on my want to read list for a while. I should take that sticker off though. But this is a really gorgeous cover. In April, I got in the House in the Dark of the Woods by Laird Hunt. I love this cover. It's just creepy and cool, fairy tale esque And then recently at a book sale, I got Agatha of Little Neon by Claire Luchette. Again, I don't really know except that it is about nuns. I don't know what it's about, but I think this cover is really awesome. I also got Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey, and I love that cover. But there's so many covers that I love. I also recently got a... Oh, let me... Let me grab that one, actually. I have recently got this amazing vintage Dorothy L. Sayers cover with this giant mushroom on it, which is gorgeous. I could go on and on. I love book covers. The next question is a book that made you happy. I am going to go with Agatha Christie's A Pocket Full of Rye. I read this for Janellathon in June, the very end of June, and I love the Miss Marple series and I love Agatha Christie. She's just so funny. Her books are so funny and I think Miss Marple especially is very, very funny and this book definitely made me laugh out loud. It definitely made me happy. The next question is a book that made you cry, and I cried for quite a bit of A Darius the Great Is Not Okay. I cried through a lot of books this year. I might do a video later on of all the books that made me cry because I have been keeping track of that on Storygraph. So I have been keeping a list of books that made me cry and a list of books that just made me like tear up. But Darius the Great Is Not Okay made me cry for quite a long time. The next prompt is newest fictional crush, and I definitely don't have a fictional crush this year. I don't usually have a fictional crush. I don't really crush on people per se in books. Yeah, I don't have one. But I do have a new favorite fictional character. That would be Darius from Darius the Great is Not Okay. I have met a lot of characters that I really like in 2023, but I think that Darius is just like my kind of nerd, and he's just a sweet kid, and he loves tea, and he works in the mall, and I just think he's a great character, and I would love to know more about him. The next question is new favorite author, new to you or debut. I, I know everyone has like criteria for this, but for me it's usually just like a feeling. I don't have to have read a bunch of books by this person. I don't have to have gotten three five stars or anything like that, but I do have to like feel that they're a new favorite author and I'm going to go with Jamaica Kincaid. I read two of her books this year, both nonfiction, and I loved both of them. So. I'm looking forward to reading some fiction by her. I have at least one other of her books on my shelves. The next question is biggest disappointment. I have a couple of biggest disappointments. I'm going to go with Ruth Ware and The Death of Mrs. Westway. I really, really didn't like this book when I read it, I think back in March. Now I, my feelings of it have softened, but the disappointment for me is that this was my second Ruth Ware and I didn't like it. I didn't hate it as much as I really disliked the first book. I mean, I pretty much hated the first book that I read by her, but I didn't like it. It just means to me that like Ruth Ware is not for me so I don't think I'll be picking up any more Ruth Ware books, even though it is tempting because I see a lot of them at book sales and little free libraries. But so it was a disappointment that I didn't like this one and that I won't be picking up any more of her books. Another disappointment was A House at the Bottom of the Lake by Josh Mallerman. I've heard only good things about this short horror novel and I was really excited for it, but I think I just built it up a little bit too much in my mind and it wasn't as horror filled or exciting, interesting as I was hoping it would be. I did enjoy it. I didn't dislike this book. It wasn't the atmospheric horror masterpiece that I was hoping it would be, or at least it wasn't for me. So this was definitely a little bit of a disappointment. 
The next question is biggest surprise, and I have a bunch of answers for this question. The Prince and the Dressmaker should not have been a surprise because everybody loves it, but for some reason I didn't know I would love it so much, and I really did love it, so that was a big surprise, a happy surprise, and this book also made me cry. I read Moonlight Shadow, which is a very, very short novella, which is contained in my copy of Kitchen, and it really surprised me because I really loved Moonlight Shadow, but I didn't like Kitchen, so it made me kind of like rethink kitchen and maybe I'm going to revisit it, reread it at some point in the fairly near future. I was really surprised by this extremely slim work of poetry. Um, it is Selected Poems by Claude McKay, and I was just surprised because it was really hard for me to get through. I ended up liking a lot of the poems, especially the ones to do with kind of racism and race relations in America. I was just really surprised at how hard this was to read new release you haven't read yet but want to and that definitely has to go to the Lakeside Cemetery by Jessica Haas. I got this a couple months after it came out. It is Jessica Haas first novel, her debut novel, so I'm super excited to read this one and I will get to it this year. This is another one that I have to read by the end of the year. The next question is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year and I just I don't keep track of new releases. I'm sure there's a lot that I want to read. I don't keep track so I don't know but I'm sure I will end up reading a latter half novel at some point this year, although have I even read a 2023 release this year yet? most read genre. So going back to my pie charts for a second, according to my calculations, my most read genre is contemporary, followed by nonfiction and horror, followed by mystery. So that makes sense to me. I think that most books fit in that contemporary category more than they fit into other things. I would like to see my mystery reading go up in the second half of the year so that I can bolster that number in my Q3 and Q4 charts. The next question is favorite reread this year. I've only reread one book so far this year and that was Invisible Monsters by Chuck Palniak. I was happy to reread this one. It was pretty much what I remembered. I remembered most of the big twists and everything, but Chuck Palniak just has such a fun, fast-paced, easy reading flow. And I haven't read a Chuck Palniak in a long time. The penultimate question is best sequel you've read so far in 2023, and that definitely goes to Authority. I loved Authority. I did end up finishing this trilogy with Acceptance in the very, very end of June, but Authority might be my favorite. No, Annihilation is my favorite of the trilogy, but Authority is definitely my second favorite of the trilogy, and I thought it was a great follow-up. And the last question is best book you've read so far this year. And a lot of times when I'm doing this tag, I have like an answer for that. Like I know the best book. I think about it, you know, it's in my mind. And that really hasn't happened too much this year, but books that I have been thinking about still are This Is a Bus by Ed Lynn. I can't wait to read more Ed Lynn. This is a 1970s historical fiction about a cop working in New York Chinatown. I really enjoyed this one. I also keep thinking about The Removed by Brandon Hobson. I read this in January or February and I really enjoyed this one. It's a little bit weird but I'm so glad I read it and it's one that even though when I first read it I didn't think I loved, I think about it a lot. The Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass. This is a nonfiction written by Frederick Douglass in the late 1800s, early 1900s, all about his experience escaping from slavery and joining the abolitionist movement and just his life in general and it was an amazing read. It definitely made me want to read more slave narratives. I read this in February and I haven't read one since although I've picked up a few so I really need to get back to that in the second half of the year. But I think maybe the best book that I've read so far this year is Peking Story of the Last Days of Old China by David Kidd. This is a nonfiction written in the 50s about David Kidd's experience living in the last Last days of old China in the 30s and 40s and it was just a really great nonfiction. I mean NYRB always does it right, right? So I think this might be the best book or my favorite book that I've read so far this year. I always hate to say best book. Best book to me. That makes more sense. So let me know what your best book and most disappointing book were this year. Let me know how many books you've read so far in 2023. Thanks so much for joining me today and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!